Hey guys, it's about 4 o'clock in the morning and I am crazy. I'm about to drive 4 hours to Tallahassee, Florida from Central Florida to go look at some plants. So, however, they're going to be Florida native plants that are beautiful and amazing. I just want to take you guys with me. So basically, this is going to be a field trip with the Florida Native Plant Society, Magnolia chapter. I'm a part of the Sun Coast chapter and I'm going to be meeting a bunch of people. We're going to be seeing a lot of beautiful plants like Blazing Star, Golden Rod, um, a bunch of different plants that I just don't get because I don't live in the panhandle and afterwards I'll probably show you a couple more things so I'll show you guys when I get there it's fall here in Florida we have amazing blooming flowers like goldenrod and blazing star and many other flowering plants that help pollinators that are very migratory like the monarch butterfly there's a lot of other different pollinators that will migrate down south and because our nectar load is so high here it gives them a chance to have resources unlike other states that are you know their flowers are basically perishing and there won't be as many resources so usually in the fall and winter mo months in florida we have the highest population of butterflies and other pollinators we're at an upland hardwood forest there's a restoration of longleaf pines and other plants that's pawpaw sweet everlasting and then there'll be a couple other plants i don't know i think this might be a service berry correct me if i'm wrong there's a lupine so velvety and cute i love them and then over here this is my favorite wildflower summer farewell it's a great blooming flower once the summer ends first botanists can be easily tricked by pines because they are they vary morphologically their shape and their needle length and the number of needles per fascicle. I was in a group of about 20 people, so I saw a lot of new faces, but this is what happens when you go to a site that's properly managed. Our native plants are fire dependent. Without fire, they wouldn't have the sunlight that they need to live. So you wouldn't be seeing all these beautiful flowers if it wasn't properly managed. This is one of my favorite blazing stars, elegant blazing star. And that's not even its real flower. That's a new pop I learned, Asimina speculata apparently. And then this is a common buckeye. If I exclude skippers, I saw at least seven different butterflies during this day. I was kind of surprised not to see more. And then this is lupine. I love them. They're so fuzzy. And then this is green eyes. If you know green eyes, the fresh blooms smell like chocolate. Catch them at the right time. See it all out here. Oh my goodness. It's like a purple. So this is a host plant to the metal mark butterfly. It's related. I need to come on this side because that's where the. There we go. All that purple is actually Trelisa odoratissimus, no longer Carpheferus. And then I saw my first ever variegated fritillary right here. It was a very pain in the butt to get this on record, but you know, I did it. I sent it for y'all. So cute. They're in my area, but I've never seen them really. Never. And just look at how cute this plant is. Like, please tell me what that plant is. Just look at those basil leaves, bruh. They're so cute. This is one of my favorites, yellow Indian grass or golden Indian grass. This should just be an ornamental grass that everyone uses. Shout out to Claudia because now I'm going to have this in my garden. Thank you for that gift because, girl, look at this grass. Look at it. Here is a lobelia. It's just like in this beautiful understory of plants. And then this right here is hemp vine. I feel like it's very underrated. So many butterflies love this plant. I've seen it all the time. And then sweet goldenrod up close and personal. And just look at this. You you got your blazing stars and your golden rods all together, and then the three main bloomers of the day, just all next to each other. Just look at that. And blue mist flower. Oh. Monarchs love that plant. A beetle, and then a southern pearly eye. They actually host on switch cane. So if you see a bunch of switch cane, you'll see this beautiful, like very friendly butterfly. cool thing about those is the red spots on them. So we've seen a lot of different native grasses, wildflowers, beautiful butterflies, all these things that are amazing during the fall that's great for pollinators. And I met some pretty great people. So right now I'm kind of just like in the back, literally looking at butterflies, because like us butterfly people, we gotta walk slow so we can actually see things. Um, plant people, they don't have to do that because 
the plants literally sit still. They don't have to run after them. At this point, I was done with the Florida Native Plant Society's field trip and I was just doing my solo dolo. Um, I was supposed to be looking at carnivorous plants in the Apalachicola State Forest, but I was just so tired. There's a purple thistle just looking at the side of the road and just, you know, showing you guys some of the things that I saw while I was still on my way home, but still wanted to look at more plants because, you know, once you get into this plant world, you just get sucked into it and you just want to see all the plants. It's right here, I'm on the side of the road looking at this beautiful native meadow. There's literally Helianthus angustifolia and Helianthus bradula literally next to each other side by side. Both very amazing nectar sources for pollinators. Right here is the Helianthus angustifolia and then this is the Helianthus rodula. This is not a dead flower head. This is literally a flower. Oh my god, this is gorgeous. This is so gorgeous. And there's also some old stalks of um, Liatris gracilis. And there's even elephant's foot in here. So this just shows you how beautiful native plants can be. And this is literally on the side of the road. Hey, people probably think I'm crazy, but look at all this beautiful native habitat. This is so beautiful to have this black going against. And there's even freaking Pityopsis in here. It's just such a beautiful mixture of this literal, literal native wildflower meadow. And this right here, even right here, we have some Liatris gracilis. All amongst all of this Rayless sunflower. This is a huge amount of Rayless sunflower. It's literally everywhere. There are literally butterflies using it. That is a Gulf fritillary right there nectaring on the rayless sunflower and there's a bunch of long tail skippers using this as well 